The following video covers the installation of the PLP compression splice for ACCC conductors. This video is for demonstration purposes only. Be sure to read and completely understand the application procedure supplied with the product before installing it. The compression splice includes an aluminum outer compression sleeve, two inner compression sleeves, two collet housings, two collets, a collet coupler, a collet retainer, and oxide inhibitor. Required tools include compression press with the appropriately sized dies, conductor cutter and strand removal tool, conductor wire brush, measuring tape, and utility knife. Begin by sliding the tapered end of one of the inner sleeves down over the conductor furthest from the structure, about three feet. This will be referred to as side B. Slide the outer sleeve over the side B conductor with the end of the tube approximately two feet from the end of the conductor. Slide the other inner sleeve over the conductor that is closer to the structure, about three feet. This will be referred to as side A. Measure and mark both conductor's core length from the end of the conductor according to the exposed core length column in the provided table. Side A is denoted as the conductor closest to the structure. Side B is denoted as the conductor that is furthest from the structure. Apply tape approximately one inch back from each mark to secure the aluminum strands. Cut the outer strands at each mark to expose the composite core. Take care not to cut or damage the core and ensure the core end is uncrushed. Failure to follow these instructions could result in a poor connection. Wipe the outer surface of the core clean and free of oil with a clean cloth. Use the provided 220 mesh sanding paper to rub the core lightly until it becomes white. Then re-wipe the core with the clean cloth. Slide both collet housings with wrench flats facing the conductor onto the core. Install the collets with the narrow end towards the housing onto the core. A quarter inch of the core must be exposed through the back of the collet. Install the longer coupling hardware on side A and the shorter collet retainer on side B. Hand tighten the units together before using a torque wrench to fully tighten the hardware to both collets to a minimum of 85 foot-pounds. Tighten the swivel end of the coupler to the collet retainer to a minimum of 85 foot-pounds. Measure the length of the filler tube and add 3 8 of an inch. Mark the conductor on side A this distance from the end of the aluminum strands using a felt tip marker. This will mark the location of the inner sleeve nose end. Wire brush the aluminum strands of both conductors that will be covered by the compression hardware. Apply the supplied oxide inhibitor along the length of the wire brushed aluminum strands. Slide the side A inner sleeve nose end up to the mark made previously. Wire brush and apply oxide inhibitor to the outer diameter of both of the inner sleeves. Slide the outer sleeve over the coupling assembly. Position the outer sleeve on the inner sleeve until one inch of the inner sleeve is exposed or it is stopped by the indent. With the outer sleeve and the side A inner sleeve in place, Compress the outer sleeve beginning at the side A starting crimp point, moving inward towards the end of the compression zone on side A. Make sure the correct die size is being used and slightly overlap each crimp to ensure complete compression. Compress the center of the outer tube to the coupling assembly with one crimp. Slide the inner sleeve on side B into the outer tube until one inch of the inner sleeve is sticking out or it is stopped by the indent. Compress side B starting at the inside mark and compressing outward until the end crimp point. Overlap the crimps to ensure complete compression. Installation of the compression splice for ACCC conductor is now complete. All safety guidelines set forth in the appropriate application procedure for this product must be reviewed and followed prior to installing this product. 
The installation shown is intended to illustrate the application method of the product only. It is not intended to supersede any standard utility safety guidelines and practices or use of required protective equipment.